watch it right after this. Put that in the notes. One. Oh man. She got jacked up. Her face was all smashed from the airbag. Dude, airbags suck. Uh, straight up. I got hit by an airbag uh, when I got in an accident off the five freeway. No joke, they uh, they hurt. Cut my face up, broke my glass, my sunglasses. Actually, no, my sunglasses survived. They're old Arnett's, man, those are Arnett's. They, uh, they're, they're, they're stout, they're sturdy. So today is all about boxings and unboxings, and I'm gonna do the unboxing first, and then I'm gonna do a boxing of my Christmas gifts. And while I do that, I'm gonna drink this fine craft beer and talk to you about craft beer and more politics stuff. Not too long ago, I was telling you about uh, the Miller and the InBev company trying to consolidate their forces and create a global monopoly of beer and how, you know, <laughs> people are going to try and ban that and that's basically statism and all that good stuff. Well, something else is going on. People are claiming that InBev and, uh, or ABV InBev and Miller are trying to kill craft brews. And the way they're doing that is by incentivizing distributors and dealers not to distribute the craft brews. And they can do that because those two companies make up roughly 80% of the entire market share. We'll talk more about that in a second. I'm using my wonderful beer scout here to open this box. This box is coming from the Bespoke People. This is their Black Friday special. Basically, they said if you bought $45 or more of product on Black Friday, they would send you some kind of random bag of stuff. And so that's what this is. We're gonna see what this random bag is all about. So this is, I don't know what this is. What is this? Okay, unknown box. Let's get that one out of the way for right now. My way, there we go, just rip the box off. This is Stowe, okay. So this is what I ordered, I ordered Stowe. Let's cover the Stowe first, because this is actually what I expected to get. Uh, the reason I ordered this is it is a cool, gotta keep these blades clean. Also, I'm noticing a bit of a rust or something taking place on this, this knife. I'm gonna have to do a little bit better. Interesting, I'm gonna have to do a little bit better here. Let's see if I can get that on camera. Yeah, a little spot of rust right there. No problem, that's easy enough to clean. Okay, Stowe. What is Stowe? Stowe is a tool roll, and it's got some other crap that I don't really care about. <laughs> to be honest with you, I just really like the tool roll. I was really into it, and I, I wanted it in this green, oh my god, I wanted this green colored tool roll, which was my primary reason for ordering this. Look, at this is a really nice tool roll. It's got a, uh, a flap for the tools, it also has an interior pocket with Velcro. You can really get a lot of stuff in here, very cool. Like I said, that was my primary reason to get it, in this brown olive drab. But let me show you what it comes with. All right, so Stowe. Comes with field notes. Uh, this one is just the dotted paper. I don't have any of these dotted paper ones. Not really sure what the value is of the dotted paper. A lot of field notes have a name to them and they're supposed to be kind of, not a gimmick, but something that is the reason why they're called that. This is actually like a topographical map. You can see, same here on the back. I don't know if that, there it is, that's coming through. See? Anyway, can never have enough field notes. Okay, line of trade. I believe these pencils go with the field note. So I'm assuming that this has something to do with topography and that kind of stuff. It also comes with this little screwdriver, which has another little screwdriver inside, which has another littler screwdriver inside of that. Very useful. That will go probably to work. So that has a little clip. I can go like that. Pencils can go in there. This is some kind of chap lip remedy here. Have no idea, you know, what that is. Never tried that before. And then you have a cologne, ooh, ooh la la. Something Liberty Orange. Okay, so whatever. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a tool roll. That's why I got it. That's why I wanted it. Now I've got it, I can put my other tools in it instead and I can leave this at my desk. Because what happens is I have, I have tools like 
a decent set of screwdrivers, precision screwdrivers, a Torx bit driver, which is almost always at my desk for working on knives, and I have various other things, wire cutters, small pair of pliers, etc., etc., and then loose bits. And all of that can just fit perfectly in this tool roll. Right? So yeah, look at this thing. Very cool. So yeah, awesome. Gotta be into that. I love tool rolls. I love stuff like that. Okay, so let me have a sip of beer here. Let me realize that putting my knife in the tool roll was not a good smart idea. Okay. Now this is the special box that Black Friday special. I'm assuming that's why it's in a black box. I don't remember if there was a dollar amount associated with this. I think there was. All right, it's called Black Box. Oh, okay, here you go guys. I couldn't get you a discount on the bespoke boxes. My affiliate link is in the description. If you want, take the link and then use this coupon, coupon code. The first person that uses it, you got it. $10 off uh, an order of $75. Okay, this is called Black Box. Consider this our calling card, a hint of top quality goods we bring together each month. See what else we've got up our sleeves at bespoke.com. This is line of tra trade, leather shoelaces. This is a, oh. If you don't use cocktail bitters, it's kind of hard to explain how awesome they can be. This is Seven Still San Francisco Cocktail Bitters, 45% alcohol by volume. It's got some languages in there I don't read. Ingredients, blood orange peel, orange peel, cinnamon stick, cloves, allspice, high stop, and rye. Bitters is very cool. Yeah, that's a, uh, I like that. I love bitters. I like uh, I like old fashions. They're kind of like my favorite cocktail, my go-to cocktail. Solid brass collar stays. I'm into this. That's very cool. I have metal stays, but I don't have brass. Don't know what that means, <laughs> but sure. Dr. Sasquatch natural soap. Pine tar soap. A sample bar, so I will try that. Cremo cream, astonishingly superior shave cream. So I'll have to try this as well. And then a fish pen knife. Who likes the fish? The the fish pen knife is that cool? I don't know. Let's uh, let's open this guy and see. How the heck did they get it in there? It is simply a fish pen knife. Slip joint. Fish pen knife with a it says Mikov Inox blade. How does it cut? Not very sharp, but the blade is super thin. Not a good cutter, but not horrible. Okay, so that's kind of funny. All right, okay, so that's the box, the black box, if you will. The blackest of black boxes. Let me put that, let me put the fish back in its, its case. I kind of want to make a cocktail. I have uh, I have everything I need minus some good whiskey. Shoot. Oh, I'll have to wait for another time. Oh boy, what 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 is this that you just came home with, Leia? The mine. Is this? Those are elf pajamas. Oh, wow. Guess who's Santa? You? Yeah, because of my belly. So I've got a little Benny elf costume here. And I've got a big daddy elf costume here. Wow. It's time to get wrapping. I had to make some special letters here for the people that I signed to, whom I appreciate very much so. I'm gonna fold up these boxes and then we're gonna stuff some packages. And while I do this, I'm gonna explain to you this whole InBev thing. So my wife, my wife, is going to come over here and probably explain it a lot better than me, but I'm gonna take a crack at giving you a real high level thing while I'm folding these boxes up and then she's gonna come school us, or school me, on how I am not explaining correctly. But there's a three-tiered system, and I'm mainly gonna talk about the government, she's gonna talk about the logistics. 
Let me explain the three-tiered system. Sometime after Prohibition, the government created the three-tiered system that said the brewer can't also be the distributor and really can't also be the one who sells the beer. In some cases they are, some states have, have lacked some, but that's the laws that are in the books. So they've created this middleman favoring big bureaucracy stupid system to get people taxed more in drinking and consuming alcohol and beer. So Mother Jones made an article about how InBev is going to the system where they incentivize distributors to make a large portion of what they distribute their beer, the Budweiser beers and et cetera, et cetera. Mother Jones takes that to mean that Anheuser-Busch, InBev, and, and Miller Coors is, are trying to kill craft brews. The reality is the only reason that they're able to do this and make, the, make these deals with distributors is because the government forces you to have a three-tiered system. The solution isn't let's go in and, and, and kneecap Anheuser-Busch, InBev, and all them. They're just playing the, the game that's been dealt to them. The reality is it's the laws that are causing the issue. So if they just get rid of the three-tiered system... Disagree. Why? You want more government bureaucracy? No, no, no. I disagree that the reason that they have any kind of power is because of the three-tiered system. Tobacco doesn't have a three-tiered system. Yeah, they can do whatever they want, though. Right, but what... But they're mandated, they're taxed, like there's right. taxes that are... What InBev is doing is they're modeling their distributor contract. Wait, after... before before we get too down the, the rabbit hole, let me, let me make sure that I'm making my point clearly. If there wasn't a three-tiered system, you as a marketer, the, the person who provides the alcohol to the consumer, could technically get whatever alcohol you wanted. You could go directly to Stone Brewing Company and have them provide you beer directly, right? If there was no three-tiered system, correct? That is the, that is true. That is a true statement. Yes. Okay, so let me just let me just explain my point really quick, and then I'll let you take over, and I know you know more about the actual logistics. So there's a three-tiered system. You have to buy beer through a distributor. That distributor is not in Bev slash Miller slash whatever, correct? Okay, so. So what you're saying legally is technically true, but it's actually it's actually a moot point in today's market because all the breweries do now okay. is they open their own distribution company. So Stone has Stone Brewing, Stone also has Stone Distribution. Right, but they have to be separate entities. Yeah, they're separate entities, but it doesn't matter. But that's a cost. There's a cost associated with creating a, a, a completely separate autonomous entity. It's, and it's and phenomenal. wait, 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 wait. Okay, but now you're now you're playing that big game cronyism logistics. So Stone has their own distribution company because Stone is the biggest freaking craft brew brew maker in, in the world. Can a mom and pop shop create their own distribution mechanism? Well, interestingly, a part of the InBev restriction for distributors who buy into their marketing plan is that the craft brews you do carry have to produce 15,000 cases or less a year or something. Right, because they're trying to get around any laws that they'd be violating. No, 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 no. They're trying to prevent any one craft brew like Stone from becoming a major competitor in their beer market. But they also can't, they can't extinguish all beers that aren't theirs, otherwise there would be federal monopoly claims. Well, there's already Just there's like already Microsoft did with Internet Explorer. There's already that issue. And, the, and how they're getting away from that legally is by saying, small craft brews, okay, we're, we're, we're your friend. But big craft brews are market competition. So mom and pop shops, have to go through large distributors versus you, Leia, knowing there's a craft brew place down the street or a brewery that you like and having them just in a truck, their, someone's truck, drive you beer over. The federal government prohibits that. So you're still playing the big business game. You're just playing it with a big, big craft brew. That's what's going on here. The federal government is preventing you from going directly to a brewer that you like. Do you think you can, you can no, drive down it? Okay, so I, I don't agree with government restriction, but in this, okay. and, and in this case, 
I don't think the government restriction is making a huge difference when you're talking about um, a company that really controls a majority of the market. Okay, okay. So this is what I'm not, this is what I guess I'm not getting my point across. There is a middleman, the distributor. Yeah. They have to get paid. Yeah. If you liked Anaheim Brewery and called up the brewer and said, I want four pallets of your beer. Right. And I'm gonna rent a U-Haul truck and drive it and pick up said beer right. and sell it in your establishment, you are breaking a federal law. It would be cheaper for you to go direct to the brewery. Right. But they don't allow you to do that. You are paying a tax. The tax is the middleman. Yeah. So that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about the, the business of, you do a good business playing the cards you're dealt. I'm talking about the laws that you're forced to comply no, I'm to. Not, I'm not pro law. I know you're not, but I'm, you're, you're making saying, it sound like it's not a big deal in this case, and it is. You can't go directly to the brewery and buy the beer. You can't. It doesn't make a difference because of what InBev's new move is. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. If, if New Belgium was, if, wait, 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 wait. If New Belgium, who makes more than 100,000 barrels a yeah. year, was right next door to your establishment, mm -hmm. you couldn't go over there and buy beer from them. Right. That's a problem. That's my point. I, what do you not understand about me saying that if I'm not- You said it doesn't that, matter in this case. It absolutely doesn't matter No, it doesn't. Case. It doesn't matter because if you want to be able to distribute Budweiser and other Anheuser-Busch products under the new structure, you wouldn't be able to carry them anyway. Is it because you have to sign an agreement? Yes. In order, okay, so. You the assigned agreement, not the distributor? I thought it was the distributor is the one that has to sign the agreement. Well, it's, it's all trickle down, right? Because, okay, so currently, distributors control districts. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, in Orange County. What? Yeah, I see it. There's one distributor. In LA County, there's another distributor. Okay. Right? Uh, there may be a larger distributor that does like um, Miller or something like that. But let's speak specifically about Anheuser Busch. Okay. There are districts. Okay. In each district, the distributor is required to charge every customer the same amount okay. for a product, regardless of quantity. But the way that they get around that is you sign contracts, right? You sign a contract okay. with the distributor. Wait, let me back up. Okay. So my quantity number is inaccurate. Okay, so everybody has to be treated equally, right? But the way that they get around giving one person a discount versus another is usually shelf space. You sign a contract with the distributor that you will maintain X number of space. No, a specific planogram. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So under the existing planogram, and this th this is like very common for. Um, across companies like tobacco companies, everything. Right. Okay. So you sign up under a specific planogram. The planogram allows for X amount of space for non-Anheuser-Busch product. Correct. Okay. And under the Anheuser-Busch umbrella, there are what you would consider a craft brew. Right, like for a while, Goose Island would have been considered a, a craft brew. It's kind of lost its cachet since it's right. been purchased by Anheuser-Busch. Right. Um, but there are spaces for that. So you have to maintain X amount of space for Bud Light, X amount of space for Budweiser, um, X amount of space for... What else do they do? Like Pacifico, but Corona, be whatever. Beers that are associated with that distributor. Well, basically. No, there are beers that you wouldn't associate with Anheuser Busch that's done through that distributor. But that's, that's what I just said. Beers that are associated with that distributor. 
Like they're, they're you're not okay. Oh, oh, okay. Your your okay, plan okay. is only beers from that distributor. Right. Okay. Okay. So in the new Anheuser Busch plan, yeah, what they're going to do is they're going to lay out specifically what each distributor is allowed to contract every retailer with. Right. Right. And then they're going to say, well, if the retailer wants a portion of this marketing money, which is going to be their go around, like now they can say, oh, well, a part of our marketing is your planogram. Here's X number of dollars for maintaining this planogram, mm -hmm. which will in all likelihood be uh, a per case discount. Okay. Right. Based on some kind of contract level. Say you follow their like top of the line ideal planogram, you're like a platinum retailer. Right, so you are you are selling only what they allow you to sell. The, the problem is, if you don't buy in, then you don't get any of the discount money and then you're not price competitive. Uh, right. So, if your bread and butter 45%, I think, is what Anheuser-Busch products rule in the in the average market, mm -hmm. right? If all of your surrounding competing stores have some kind of contract with Anheuser-Busch, mm -hmm. and they're getting a $10 per case discount for participating in the marketing, right? That means that every product that they sell, they're going to be able to sell for a dollar cheaper than you. Right. Or two dollars. Right. Three dollars. Right. right. In essence, you will no longer be somewhere people go to buy that product. So, okay. And if beer is a large percentage of your sales, you're screwed. Right. Because you have to go through a distributor. Because Anheuser Busch runs the market; they own forty-five percent of it. Correct. Because if you want to be price competitive for the base product that runs that segment, you have to agree to their contract. I could have 20 other distributors come to me mm -hmm. willing to sell me craft brews, but it would violate my planogram under this new Anheuser-Busch plan to have more than 5% of my cooler Hold craft brew. All of your coolers. They want access to all of your coolers. The coolers you can't say this. These five beer. coolers are for the no, planogram. The coolers that would be beer. Right. All of the beer coolers. Yes. It's the same thing. Okay. So for instance, this is actually obviously modeled after the Philip Morris contract. Mm -hmm. If you've ever like, if you've ever noticed that when you go into any store that sells cigarettes. Philip Morris is all about the same price. Unless you go to a store that's just crap and... Uh, depending on your part of the country, of course. Right, in your area, in your right, 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 right. geographic area. So, Philip Morris is, in most areas, 70% mm -hmm. of, um, of tobacco sales. It's all right. Marlboro products. It's... Um, what else do they have? It's like Skoll in Copenhagen, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a ton of products. So if you're not going to sign a contract right. with Philip Morris, mm -hmm. you're not getting the discount. You're not going to be price competitive. You're not going to be a regular stop for people to purchase your tobacco. Um, okay. Like it's the difference between selling a pack of Marlboros for four dollars and something in California versus six dollars. I, I guess the problem I have is that your implication is that if there wasn't this government law, that all things would be the same, and they wouldn't. I'm saying that it doesn't. What the government law doesn't matter once you have a, a company that has a near monopoly. That's not true either. Because they control the market. So between Philip Morris and RJ Reynolds, they are the big players in tobacco. They run your displays. You don't have a choice as a retailer if you want to be price competitive to display whatever you want. They come in, 
with their marketers. So they they set up exactly what your fixtures look like. Mm -hmm. If you add another fixture, right. you risk your contract. There are certain brands that because they are not represented by Philip Morris or RJ Reynolds, that will never get shelf space. That just really, that just affects you. You're affected by it. Because they only see it as a result of you selling their product or not selling their product. You lose business. You're not selling that product. So the only one that would have to change is you, the seller, by the customer not buying the product anymore. Right, yeah. Or to appreciable numbers that you had to find another option. Something like that. Right, right. If there was a significant enough decline in the sale of the product that giving 95% of the cooler space no longer made sense. Right, then you, then either your contracts would have to change. Right. And they have to be reflexive to that or yeah. you would break your contract. Right. Hmm, interesting. I mean, that's what it seems, that's the direction everything seems to be going. It's just gonna take a long time. I don't think there's gonna be a continual, I mean, there's going to be crap beer, Mommy. but craft beer is Daddy. going to become more popular Daddy. than it already is. Well, I think what you're gonna see is that craft beer is going to dominate um, boutique markets. Like what- Right, you, oh yeah, 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 sure. is just trying to hedge Grocery major. stores, Walmart, gas stations. Yeah, like wherever people would normally buy beer out of convenience. Right. But you will have to go out of your way to go to a craft beer boutique. That makes sense. Interesting. Well, thank you, Leia. Mm -hmm. That was very helpful. I hope that was helpful to you guys. I don't know why anybody would care. Because everybody cares about what government and big business is all about and the inner workings, the sausage making, if you will. Well, I think so. And I'm making a video, so that's what I care about. <laughs> okay guys, so that's it for today, I think. Got enough going on here. I'm gonna put some postage on these bad boys and get them shipped out tomorrow. Post a comment if you are interested in hearing more about the, interns, the internal workings of beer markets. Yeah? Thumbs up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. I realize what this uh, book's all about. It's a regular field notes, but it's uh, waterproof. The paper is in, is like a impregnated plasticky paper, and this uh, outer cover is also like a, a laminated paper. Very cool. I don't have a waterproof field notes. Very excited about that.